Welcome back to part two of Pythagorean Theorem and Right Triangles. We've already done a whole bunch of notes. This is just kind of a review. So we've got Pythagorean Theorem. Remember, this only works with right triangles, and C is always the hypotenuse. It's always the longest side. So in question number one, the rectangle below has a diagonal length of 20. If the base of the rectangle is twice as long as the height, so height and twice as long as the height, what is the height? Pythagorean theorem is going to work here. I've got h squared plus 2h squared equals 20 squared. So h squared Remember here, you almost have to think about distributing that exponent. So that's going to be 2 squared, which is 4. And then h squared equals 400. If I have 4 h squares and 1 h squared, that's 5 h squared equals 400. Divide by 5, divide by 5, and then take the square root of the answer. And that's going to be what you get. Off to question number two. This is kind of a long one. I think we're going to have to do two parts to this video too. Um, we'll see. So question number two, search Pythagorean triples. Oh, we've already done this. So Pythagorean triples, remember, you should be able to write three, four, five, uh, five, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, 9, 40, 41. There are definitely some other ones, but you should be able to at least get those. Um, if nothing else, you've got to remember the 3, 4, 5, right? So list your most popular. This is for you. I'm not going to take time in this video to talk about those. We've kind of already listed several of them. You can always check. This is just a time saver, guys. So SAT is all about saving time, memorizing those Pythagorean triples um, and the hashtag for um, 30, 60, 90 and 45, 45, 90. Just going to save you a ton of time, which brings me to the 45, 45, 90 and the 30, 60, 90. Remember that opposite the 45s are going to be your X's. That's why we write these together and then opposite the 90 degrees is that x on the square root of 2. Opposite the 30 is going to be your x. Opposite the 90 is going to be your 2x. And then we've got three different angles, so that's square root of 3. Just remember these tables. you got to memorize them, got to memorize them, got to memorize them. There's just no way around it. Unless you just you know, want to use trig, but a lot of the SAT questions are going to be non-calculator, so that trig's not going to work. Um, so in number three, let's see what that says. Given the image below, calculate the value of H in radical form. So if I know this is a 30, 60, 90, um, shape, then this is S, this is 2S, and this is S on the square root of 3. So H just equals S on the square root of 3. Sometimes they are that easy. Um, describe the outside triangle in question 3 in terms of its sides and angles. So this triangle is a 60, 60, 60 triangle with 2S, 2S. So this is equilateral. and equiangular. Equiangular. It makes me crazy that the stylus has such bad handwriting. I'm not going to blame it on me. I'm going to blame it on the stylist. Describe the two interior triangles. So when they're talking about those, they're talking about these two interior triangles. When you divide that equilateral triangle, you get a right galene triangle. Right scalene, right? And that's going to be our 30, 60, 90 triangle, right? That works every time you have an equilateral triangle. You have an equilateral triangle, 
divide it straight down the middle, that's going to give you two right triangles that are 30, 60, 90, because you divide the 60 degree angle in half, keep the 60 degree angle, create a 90 degree angle. Okay, so you don't have to be told that, you can just know that. Question number five, what is the area of the triangle shown? So area is one half base times height for a triangle. So if I know four, this is X on the square root of two. So if X on the square root of two equals four, I divide by the square root of two, divide by the square root of two, can't have that radical in the denominator. You're going to multiply it away, so that's 4 square root of 2 over 2, or those cross out 2 on the square root of 2 for both legs. So if I do 1 half base times height, 1 half the base, which is 2 square root of 2 times the height, which is 2 square root of 2, multiply what's outside, so that's 4. Multiply what's inside, so that's square root of 4, divided by 2. So this is going to be 2, this is going to be 2. Those are going to cross out, and we're going to be left with 4. Hopefully that made sense. Number 6, in the figure below, AD and DC are congruent. Excellent. Angle B is 30 degrees, that's marked, and AB is 10. What is the ratio of AC, so I need to find this, to CB, I need to find this. Um, so if I know this is congruent, I know that these angles are 45 degrees, right? 45 degrees and 45 degrees. If this is 45 degrees, then this has to be the supplement to it. So 45 from 180 is somehow I feel like I'm not going about this quite right. Hmm, let's erase all of that and see if we can go back to the beginning, right? Sometimes you start in, this is another time-sucking problem potentially. So if I was doing this on a real SAT, I would probably skip this one right off the bat and then come back to it. But okay, so I'm going to read this again. A, D, and DC are congruent. So I know these are both 45. I know angle 30. So this triangle is a 30, 60, 90. Now I'm cooking with gas. So this is gonna be X. This is gonna be two X, and this is gonna be X on the square root of three. So if I know that this is 2x, then x equals 5, which means this equals 5, and this whole thing equals 5 on the square root of 3. So this part, CB, is going to be 5 on the square root of 3 minus 5, and this part, AC, is going to be 5 on the square root of 2. It asked me for the ratio of AC to CB. So what I can do now is almost um, factor out a 5 out of everything. So 5 times the square root of 2, and then 5 times square root of 3 minus 1. All I've done is divide by 5 to take that out of the parentheses. Then 5 divided by 5 goes away, and I'm left with square root of 2 divided by square root of 3 minus 1, which is one of my answer choices. So sometimes if you don't kind of set up the equation or the problem right the first time, just erase everything and start again. See if that helps out. Okay, a lot of stuff in that problem. We can talk about that one uh, in our discussion board if you have a question about that.
But again, that's one of those time sucking questions. It's just going to take you down a rabbit hole if you allow it to. All right, number seven. The lengths of the sides of a right triangle are x, x minus 2, and x plus 5. So automatically, I know right triangle, Pythagorean theorem, and this is going to be my longest side, as long as x is a positive number. That's going to be my hypotenuse. Which of the following equations could be used to find x? So if I'm doing a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? And I know x plus 5 has to be my c squared. Can't be this. Can't be this. Can't be this. That's got to be my hypotenuse, right? So use logic. That'll take you a long way. Figures not drawn to scale. Given AC is 10, so this is that isosceles tri or um, equilateral triangle cut in half. So I know I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If the hypotenuse is 10, that means this is 5, and this is 5 on the square root of 3. What is the length of AD? Oh, AD, 5 square root of 3. Answer the question before I even realized what the question was. Sometimes I like that. All right. Question number nine. A square with side lengths of six is shown. So first thing I need to realize is this is a square, right? So if I cut a square in half, I've got a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which means this is six on the square root of two. We've got two sides are the same. That's how I remember it's a square root of two. What is the value of X? Boom, we're done. In the figure, an equilateral triangle, so all of these are congruent, sits on top of a square, so all of these are congruent. The square has an area of four. So the area is length times width, or side squared. So if area equals four, that equals the side squared. If I take the square root of both sides, then the sides equal two. So two, 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 two. What is the area of the equilateral triangle? So I'm trying to find the area of this equilateral triangle. If I redraw that down here, the equilateral triangle, I can get 2, 1, and the square root of 3. So this whole distance down here is 2, but this piece is 1. So if I do 1 half of the base, the base was that whole length, the 2, times the height, square root of 3, Half of two, those cancel out, and I'm just left with the square root of three. I know sometimes teachers make it look too easy, right? Make sure you can do these on your own, and when you go to do the puzzle piece, you're actually reworking them out, not just copying from the video, right? The whole goal here is it's going to improve your SAT score. Print these, save these, do what you need to do so that you can review them before you actually take the test. Right. All right. Number 11. In triangle ABC, that's the small triangle, and AED, that's the big triangle, we've got two right angles. DE equals 9. So DE equals 9. And DA, this whole thing equals 12. You might not recognize it right away, but this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. There's just been a scale factor of 3. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. That's multiplied by 3 is going to give you 9 squared plus 12 squared equals 15 squared, that means this is 15. You can also do 9 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared, and then solve it, you will get 15. Okay, so if you recognize that as just a scale factor of the 3, 4, 5 triangle, you get 15 a lot faster than using Pythagorean theorem. So let's check out what we have left to do, right? Because that can't possibly be the right answer. 
what is the length of AB? So AB is my question. Mm -hmm. CB is six. That's what I forgot to read. CB is six. So I've got six over nine. Six over nine equals X over 15. X over 15. These are similar triangles. They're also right triangles. So we had to use Pythagorean theorem to get the 15, but then we've got to use a proportion to find the missing side. So just solve that proportion and you'll have it, have the answer. Number 12, two poles represented by X, W, and Y, Z are 15 feet apart. So that's all in the drawing. One is 20 feet tall. The other is 12 feet tall. A rope joins the top. So there's a rope here. What is the length of the rope? So what we need to do is make this trapezoid into a right triangle. If we make a horizontal line here that's parallel to the 15, then we've got a triangle we can work with. If I know the whole thing is 20 and this piece is 12, W to the that new horizontal line has got to be 8 because 20 minus 12 is 8. So now I've got this triangle that's 8 by 15. This is another Pythagorean triple. If you don't recognize it right away, then you got to do 8 squared plus 15 squared equals C squared and figure out what C is. If you recognize the triple, then you've already got your answer. So much time erasing. All right, number 13, 13, 13. What is the value of X? Oh, we've got some algebra to do here. All right, so we've got eight squared plus X squared equals X plus two squared. I'm gonna rewrite that because we're gonna need this to be clear. All right, stylus work for me today. X squared plus eight squared equals X plus two squared. So remember when you do X plus two squared, you've got X squared plus 64, and then that's gonna be X plus two times X plus two. First, outer, inner, last foil. So x squared plus 64 equals x squared plus 2x and 2x make 4x and then plus 4. Your x squareds are going to cancel out and you subtract 4 from both sides. So 4x equals 60 and x equals, you guessed it, number 14. Two parallel lines are shown. A, B is 15. I think this should be a zero. Zero N. Instead of an M, that should be a zero. I think that's a typo. A, B is 15. So the distance here is 15. What is the value of N? So remember, that's a zero. Zero N. What is the value of N? Hmm. So I know this is a three, four, five triangle, right? Three, four, five triangle. Let's see if I can make that a little more clean. Let me erase this a little bit. Okay. So we're going to make this zero n, right? We're going to make this zero n. This triangle here, I've gone up three, so that's three and four, which means this is five. So if I know that this triangle down here has a length of 15, the three, 
four, five triangle has turned into a 15. That means it's been scaled by three, scale factor of three. So this has to be 12 and nine. So if I've gone up three, I need to go down nine. So this point, I get a different color. This point should be zero, nine, ooh, negative nine. And this point should be my 12 because it's the horizontal distance. So that should be negative 12, zero. And it's asking me what's the value of N. So I think that should be the negative nine. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. That was kind of a weird one on the coordinate plane. And it is frustrating to Desmos. We've gotten kind of used to, and SAT has not picked up Desmos yet. So it would be really nice if you had that. Um, there's some cool things you can do with Desmos to help you with this kind of problem on the coordinate plane. But really, it comes down to special right chart, Pythagorean triples, and scale factor. Oh, now we're getting into the big voice. All right. These definitely are the harder questions. What is the length of DB? So this is what I'm looking for. In order to get there, we have to do this reflexive side. So I know my 45, 45, 90 triangle, this is going to be 2. So y equals 2 on the square root of 2. And then... Let me redraw this 30, 60, 90 triangle. So y is opposite this. So 2 on the square root of 2 equals, this is x, this is 2x. So this is x on the square root of 3. I'm going to divide by the square root of 3 and divide by the square root of 3. Then I'm going to rationalize. So 2 square root of 2 divided by the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, which is going to give me 2 on the square root of, we multiply our radicals together, so the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, square root of 6, and then the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. So x equals 2 square root of 6 over 3, I'm looking for this 2x side, which means I've got to multiply this by 2. So that's going to be 4 square root of 6 over 3. Is that a choice? Hooey! It is. So that was a lot of work for number 15, right? The rationalizing and all of that. You could also, if you had a calculator, do this in the calculator and then compare all of those decimals if the working with the radical stresses you out. Or this would be one of those questions that you skip and come back to if you have time, because it's definitely, if you know how to use the radicals, going to be an easier question. But if you're not sure about the radicals, you're going to have a hard time. Okay, don't let it suck that time away from you. Question number 16, I think, is the hardest question um, on here. An equilateral triangle is inscribed in another equal equilateral triangle inscribed in equilateral. So that should be two words um, such that these guys are perpendicular. What is the ratio of the area of DEF? So DEF to the area of ABC. So DEF is the small and ABC is the large, right? So sometimes if you're not given any numbers, you need to just invent one, right? So if I look at EDF, EDF, let's make DF2. So if I make this 1, 2, square root of 3, right? So this distance we've made 2. All of those we've made 2. So then the area of this triangle is going to be 1 half 
the base, which is two, times the height, which is the square root of three. Those guys are gonna cancel out, and we're gonna get the area of the small triangle is the square root of three, okay? So in that, we know that this is two, right? So if this is two, that means this is 60. So two equals X on the square root of three. So we divide by the square root of three, divide by the square root of three, rationalize, square root of three, square root of three. So we've got two square root of three over three. That's this side here, two square root of three over three. So then if I find the area of this blue triangle, right, area of the blue triangle, this bottom part right here is the base and the height is two. So I've got two square root of three over three. That's the base, AD, times the height, which is two, and times one half because it's one half base times height. And then I've got three of them. I've got one, two, three blue triangles times three. So if you do all that in the calculator, the twos are gonna cancel out because I multiply by two and divide by two, they cancel out. The threes are gonna cancel out. If I multiply by two and divide by two, it cancels out. So the area of those three triangles is two on the square root of three. That's the area of just the blue parts. I want the area of the whole large triangle. So that's two on the square root of three plus that purple piece in the center, which is the square root of three. So this is gonna be, let me get a different color. One on the square root of three and three on the square root of three. So one square root of three to three square root of three. That ratio, if I divide out the square roots of three, it's gonna be a one to three ratio. I hope that made sense. To recap, we found the area of the purple triangle. Then we found the area of one blue triangle, multiplied it by three, and that gave us square root of two on the square root of three plus the purple square root of three when we reduced that whole ratio, we got one to three. A lot of work there, a lot of work there. Definitely the hardest question, I think. At least so far, we haven't looked at uh, what's to come. Erase, erase, erase. Oh, I just turned my page to look at 17 through 20. Maybe that wasn't the hardest question. I don't know. All right. That's so why we spent all that time in unit seven. All right. Last four. In the figure below, equilateral triangle AED is contained within a square. What is the degree measure of BEC? BEC. So let's label what we know. We know this is an isosceles triangle. So if I cut the isosceles triangle in half, I'm just going to invent some numbers here. So if this is two and this is two, this is one, and then the height is the square root of three. I know that's hard to see. That means this is two and this is two. What else can I label? Let me get a new color. Um, I know that this is 60 and 60 and 60, which means that this angle is 30 and this angle is 30. Hmm. Uh, 
if I know that this height is the square root of 3 and this height is 2, then this height, so this is the BC triangle, this height is going to be 2 minus the square root of 3. I wonder if that helps me at all. So I might just actually use process of elimination. So I'm going to erase all of this stuff that I know, right? We figured out that this is 60. This is 60. This is 60, which means this is 30. And this is 30. If these are right angles, then I've got a 60 here. I wonder if I can write this bigger. I need my drawing to be bigger. Let's do it over here. So I've got 60 and 60 and 60, and 30, and 30. If these are right angles, which is a guess, right, then this is going to be a 60, which is this is a 30, and this is a 60, and this is a 30. So if this triangle adds up to 180 degrees, 180 minus 60 is 120, and that gives me a really good estimate, right? I think that's going to be my guess without doing a whole lot of work like I was trying to do with this whole two minus the square root of three thing, right? Can't guarantee that it's going to be a good answer, but sometimes when you're running out of time, that's kind of the best you got to do. In the figure, a semicircle sits on top of a square side length of six. So if this is six, this is six, this is six. We can also look at each of these radii are going to be three. The whole thing is six. The diameter is six, which means the radius is three. If I draw a new triangle with A at the top and B at the bottom, all I've done is extend that line to make a triangle. Then I know that 3 plus 6 is 9, and this is a half of a 6, which is a 3. Can I do Pythagorean theorem to get C? I think so. And just because 17 was a little crazy and we had to do some estimating, I know I, do, I tell you don't ever uh, make assumptions. Sometimes when you're running out of time and your back's against a wall, that's the best way to do it. But just because you have a hard problem in number 17 doesn't mean number 18 is going to be hard. So that's why it's important to skip and then come back. Okay. The trick with number 18 was definitely to recognize that you can cut that shape into multiple pieces. So a lot of times, first time you see it, you don't even think that you can do that. Number 19 and number 20. I think number 20 we've seen before, but I think I need to make some adjustments to it. So number 19 first, A, B, C. So A, B, C, A, B, C. A and B are 6, and ABC is 120. So if I cut 120 in half, I get 60, 60, and 60. What is the area of the triangle? So that's my 2x. That means the height is 3, and this is 3 on the square root of 6 which means this is three on the square root of six. So my height is gonna be one half, or my area, one half the base, which is three on the square root of six and three on the square root of six, which is six on the square root of six, times the height, which is three. 
So three. So in your calculator, if you do six times three, that's 18. 18 divided by two, that's nine. So nine on the square root of six. Hmm, why did I, oh, because that's a three. And a three. I don't know where I got the six from. And a three. Nine on the square root of three. Boom. Question number 20. Let me erase all of this first. So question number 20 is definitely a time sucking problem too. I actually had to go to Desmos to prove this one to myself because I really, really want it to be four on the square root of two because of similar triangles. Um, but that is just not the right answer. So let me see if I can try to prove it to you. So we know we've got a square. So we've got 12, 12, 12, and 12. If we cut that along the diagonal, that diagonal is 12 on the square root of 3, right? Um, we know the whole thing is 12. We know this piece is 4, which means this piece has got to be 8. No, it's 12 on the square root of 3. 12 on the square root of 2. Right? 45, 45, 90, two sides are the same, square root of two. All right, so the problem here is <clears throat> I tend to try to want to make this similar triangles. So if I look at this triangle, I've got a hypotenuse of 12 on the square root of two and a side length of 12, right? If I try to look at this triangle, I want to make those similar, but they're not really because the diagonal from E to F is not straight across, right? So what I tend to try to want to do is say that the 12 goes with the 4, which means this should be 4 on the square root of 2. And I really want it to be D, but those triangles aren't really similar. This diagonal is shorter, so I know it can't be D, right? If you put this into Desmos, you will see that this intersection right there at point E, if this is zero, zero, and B is 12, 12, you'll see that this intersection at C is nine, nine which means that if I make that right triangle that I'm trying to make, this is going to be three and three and three on the square root of two. My answer is actually going to be this one, even though I really think, you know, anyway, I think that's the right answer. And that's how I got it. If you guys can come up with a better solution to this one, I would love to hear it. Um, it's not often that a math teacher is struggling with a problem, but this is my struggle. I um, am not sure I have a better explanation for you as to why it is three on the square root of two, but that is the right answer. You do not want to do similar triangles. This proportion proves that it is not four on the square root of two. All right. All right. Good luck.